Suspense. Tonight, bring you Mr. Peter Lorre, a star of Nobody Loves Me, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment. Bring you Peter Lorre in a remarkable tale of Suspense. Hello. Are you guys in charge of this precinct? Well, hello, bright eyes. Who's in charge here? Uh, just a minute. How did you get in? I walked in. Who's the top man here? This is the squad room, son. If you have a complaint, give it to the desk sergeant. No, I don't want to bother him. He's sleeping. Jenkins sleeping? Boy, till I tell... You better sit down. Hey, Costello, he's got a gun. Yeah, I got a gun. Sit down. Hey, hey son, you, you... You must be crazy. Maybe... But I think I know what I'm doing. Well, you... You can't hold up a police station, mister. No? There's no dough here. No, 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 no. Look, son, look. Keep your hands up. I didn't move. Hey, you. Shove that chair over for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mister. Yeah, I... I have a lot to talk about, and I... I want to be comfortable. I've come to tell you cups a story. Look, mister. This isn't funny. Just tell your story and... And give you a present. How's that? Oh, oh, what do you mean, uh, uh, a present? Why, I'm a regular Santa Claus. <laughs> Going to give you $10,000. Now, now, look. There is $10,000 reward for the kidnap of Peggy Stewart, am I right? You, you, you well, did Where that. is she? Where's the girl? Uh, uh, uh. You forget this gun. You also forget I said I was going to tell you a story first. Sit down, Captain. You, you mean you're confessing? Yeah, story of my life. You get plenty of thrills. You know why? Oh, look, son, look. Plenty look. of thrills. Because my name is Reese. Jo- 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 Joe Reese. Then you, you, you killed her. You, you, oh, you killed so her. Oh, you have heard about me. Yes. Killer Reese. Killer Reese, Captain. Then you admit I got a story. <laughs> I'm going to tell it in my own way. First things first, last things last. And Peggy Stewart comes last. Uh, look, just tell us, sir. Uh, did you kill her, Joe? I start at the beginning. The beginning when I... When I was born and... And don't interrupt. Okay. Okay, we won't interrupt. Because, you see, I... I think a lot about when I was born. Mm. Maybe somebody loved me then. Maybe when I... When I sucked in my first breath of air and let out a yell... Maybe my mother loved me. Maybe she wished I was dead. She didn't live long enough for me to find out. But after she died, it was like I was just shoved clean out of the world. Shoved off to an aunt and an uncle who had the meanest, grimiest, stinkingest little souls even you fellows could hope to meet. Yeah. And Ella and Uncle Walter. Oh, they were a pair. Why, they even looked alike. Faces like rotting cabbages. And their mean little mouths yapping away in the middle of them. Those two would have eaten the heart out of a saint. But I was so little when I went there, I, I didn't even know what I was missing. Until one day, when I was about nine, I, I found a kitten. A dirty, sick little kitten. Joe, Joe Reese, what you got there? Just a little cat. How do you speak to me? I mean, ma'am. We found it down the alley, Mother, back of the fish store. Now you get it out of here, Joe. You get it out quick. I told you, Joe. Please, ma'am, it... You hear me? It won't eat much. Please. Oh. You hear me? You get it out of here. Dirty thing. And if I see it again, Uncle Walt will beat the stuffing out of you. Yes, ma'am. Ought to kill it. Would, too, but it'd turn my stomach. Now get both of you. Yes, Mother. What you gonna do with it, Joe? I don't know. Nothing. We could have some fun, I bet. Tie something to its tail. No. I don't want to. Might as well. We could have some fun. No, I said. Say. Feel. Yeah? 
What about it? It's buzzing inside. Like machinery. Oh, that's purring. Purring? Sure. Cats do that when they're glad. It's glad? About what? Bet it thinks you're going to feed it. Oh, yes. What do cats eat, Cousin Alex? You ain't going to keep it. Sure I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it somewhere she don't know. You're crazy. I'm not. I'm going to keep it. It likes me. That's why. Likes you? A cat? Then why is it buzzing? Purring? Sure it likes me. Oh, it doesn't. It's hungry. I'll stop it purring. Look. What you doing, Alex? Watch when I twist its tail. No, don't. <coughs> hey, hey, now look what you've done. See? Now it ain't purring. <gasps> Joe! Joe, what are you doing to... It clawed me. It clawed me, and now it's scared. It clawed me. You ever feel a kitten? What it's really like? A skinny little kitten? Why, it's nothing but fur. Soft and, and a head. And its backbone is it's like a thin string of beads. Curled just so. When it's scared, its eyes stare. All one color. And its neck is thin. Thinner than a match. Like a string of beads. Just nothing between your fingers. Just nothing. For suspense, we are bringing you as star Mr. Peter Lorre in Nobody Loves Me by Herbert Clyde Lewis and Sylvia Richards. Presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. And now ring back to our Hollywood soundstage, Peter Lorre in Nobody Loves Me, a narrative well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> it never turned my stomach... It's always easy. Very easy. Uh, yes, but Joe, uh, uh, where, where did you leave the girl, Peggy? Didn't I tell you not to interrupt? I am telling you what I have to tell. Cats first and girls last. I... I sat in the backyard holding that dead kitten and it was soft for a long time. Next day it was stiff and hard and its fur. Funny, uh, a kid nine years old even knew about killing, but, but I knew... Cause when I was more than four, I I saw Uncle Walter kill a chicken. I saw his mean, stringy shoulders jump when he brought the axe down. You know, that's how I knew because because watching Uncle Walter, I I could tell he he liked to kill, liked it way down inside of him, and I hated him. So whenever I killed anything or anybody, after that, I, I was killing Uncle Walter and everybody like him. I hated him. I hated him till he died. Joe, come here. Your poor Uncle Walt is passing on and I want you to see him before he goes. Uh, Joe. Yes, ma'am. Don't say a word unless he speaks to you. I won't. Go stand on the other side of the bed. Oh, listen to the blessed man fighting for his life. Just listen to him. Yes, I listen. Oh, did I listen. And I only wished he knew he was dying. I wanted to tell him. I wanted to say, you are dying, Uncle Walter. And I'm wishing you dead. That's why I'm strangling the wind out of your turkey neck. I'm burying a knife in your filthy heart. I am doing it. Me, Joe. Oh, look at him. I, I think he's going to speak. Oh, no, no. No, he's not. Oh. 
Oh. Oh, he's dead. He's gone. Yeah, oh. he's gone. Oh, that blessed saintly man. Oh, you'll never know how much he did for you. You'll never be able to thank him. He... He's in heaven now. Yeah, I bet. Don't you understand, Joe? Your poor Uncle Walt is dead. Sure, I understand. Then can't you say something? Sure. Uncle Walt is dead. Fifteen years. Too late for me. One day after that, I mashed a toad under a rock. And there was a white dog I caught in a fence in a corner and, and threw stones at it, dozens of stones. Each day I killed one thing and some things died quick and some died slow. But I, I always felt the same. I felt good. I found there was room in the world for a bright young fellow like me. There was work to spare for a man who didn't mind killing. And a box a job I could get. Sometimes more. Hey, pick up that pencil, fatty. Yeah, you, sergeant. I'll give you a list. Yeah. Well, uh, there was the Bresco brothers. All three of them. <laughs> a guy named Lyons who was two-timing somebody's wife. Oh, and that chorus, babe. Daisy, me, Marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She got her fingers in a wrong pie. Yeah. Izzy Turnbull, the weasel, uh, an old codger named Haskett. We call him the... Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's enough of them, Joe. Now, uh, please, where'd you leave the girl? I'll get her around to her. Where'd you kill her, Joe? I am telling this. It's my story. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, Joe, sure. Because it all happened different with Peggy Stewart. See, I wasn't supposed to kill her. The boy sent me around to case the Stewart house for a kidnapping. It was all I was supposed to do, find out who was in the house and when the girl was alone. It was a big job. Why, with her father owning half the state and holding a mortgage on the rest, we, we expected it to pay off plenty. Yes, sir? I'm looking for work. There's nothing here. Oh, I thought maybe raking the yard or I can drive. No, there isn't anything. Oh, is there anyone else here I could ask? Morris? Yes. Morris, who are you talking to? It's a young fellow, Miss Peggy, looking for work. Oh. What kind of work? Oh, anything, ma'am, anything at all. You see, I, I'm going to college, and I I just want some work for the summer, and I have a bad back, so I, I can't do anything heavy. Oh, I see. Well, maybe we have something. I'll ask my father. Miss Pig! Father isn't home right now, but if you want to wait... Oh, sure, sure, I'll wait. You can come inside, Mr... Uh... Sanders. Joe Sanders. Well, come in, Joe. Horace was about to give me my lunch. Maybe you'd like to eat with me. So for more than an hour, I was on the inside, looking out, just for once. He did things to me. That room, all sunshiny where we eat. Blue dishes. The food cooked in little dabs. And so good. I was just boiling with heat. I couldn't look at her, at the girl, or talk. She didn't seem to notice what was happening to me. And that's what really got me. She didn't once look scared. Hey, you... You ever see Miss Piggy? She's little... All curved and little and bright and soft. And even her voice is soft. I'd never known anybody like her except people in books I read in a, in a modern library, you know. I, I couldn't take it. I, I want to make her like the other girls I'd known. Make her get that look in her eyes. You're not eating, Joe. Huh? Oh, uh, I've been thinking. Oh? Aren't you scared? Scared? Being alone like this with a with a fellow you don't even know. <laughs> Scared of you? Lots of girls are. Huh? Why? Are you dangerous? I don't know. Lots of girls think I am. There must be something in it. You you mean you're a wolf? No, no, I I don't mean it that way. Well, if you are, I think you're a nice wolf. The nicest I know. It's not what I mean. Anyway, you you just don't know me. It's funny. I feel like I do. 
I feel I've known you for a long time. What, what's the matter, Joe? Mm, uh, nothing. Nothing is the matter. Guess I'd better be going. But aren't you going to wait for Father? He'll be here pretty soon. No, I I guess I'd better not wait. But but you said you... You, you see, I... I just remembered I... I got to be someplace uh, at 2 o'clock. Oh. Well, if you come back tomorrow, I... That's it. Uh, yes, uh, I'll come back tomorrow. Maybe that'll be even better. I can talk to Father tonight about you. Then I'm sure he'll give you a job. Sure, you, you do that. That'll be swell. But you will come back. Promise? Oh, sure, sure. I'll come back. I couldn't figure it out. How a girl like her could be with me and not be scared. And after I practically warned her, too, you you can see how I tried to warn her, but, but she, she, she just looked at me at my eyes. My eyes! And hers stayed just the same. Blue and soft, like she was looking at anyone. Hey, there, there is killing in my eyes. Lots of killing. Well, anyone can see that. But then, and it hit me. I had to make her scared. I had to get her to look at me in that beautiful, naked way from back deep in her head. Her blue eyes, all glazed. All over. All one color. Well, I... I got my car out and drove back to her house. It was night already, and there were lights on, and windows were open, and this time I went right to the front door. I'll go, Father. <laughs> What, Joe? Hello, Miss Peggy. Well, did, did you come to see Father tonight? I, I haven't talked to him yet. No, I... I came to see you. Well, that's nice, Joe. I... I, I came to get you. Get me? Sure, don't you remember? I came back, like you said. Going to take you away. Like... Yeah. I said? Yes, yeah, see? Now you are getting that look. Now you're beginning to look at me the, the right way. Don't, Joe. You're hurting me. No, no, I'm not hurting you, Peggy. Not much yet. Just enough so you look up at me like something in a trap. You won't hurt much more when I kill you. When you... Joe! Joe, please! That's what I said when I kill you. Oh, no! It won't. No! 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 I dumped her in the front seat, and after I got the car in high, she didn't move anymore. She sat there with her big eyes staring at the road. I didn't talk anymore. I, I thought fast, and I drove fast. I, I thought how it was going to be, killing her. And I was still thinking when we got to the hideout. Huh? Where it is? Oh, well... <laughs> It's up in the mountains, and I like it there. It's nothing but a shed, but someone had a house there once, and well, there are still lilac bushes and roses, lots of roses. When I lifted her out of the car to carry her into the shed, I could smell the lilacs, and there was just enough moon to see her face. You don't have to carry me. I can walk. Just the same. I, I carry you. That's, that's part of the fun for me. You don't want to spoil my fun. Where are we? What difference does it make? No difference. <laughs> then don't ask so many questions. You, you won't see much of it anyway. Okay. Inside. Walk straight ahead and stand still. It's... it's dark. I got a candle. There. Now get over there and sit down. On the floor? Yes, on the floor. What do you want? All the comforts of home? Of your beautiful, clean, bright, wonderful home? Well, why don't you tell me what you want? Joe, what's the matter? What did I do to you? Nothing. 
You did nothing to me. Then, then why are you... Why, Joe? Go on, say it. Why am I going to kill you? Yes. It's a very foolish question. I got to kill you. But why? I got to talk to you. Watch your eyes. And tell you a lot of things. I got to hold you. Please, Joe. I got to know how... How you feel before you die. Hold you like this. Do you love me, Peggy? Do you? Love you? Sure. That's what I asked. Of course not. Of course I don't love you. You see? Nobody loves me. Nobody ever loved me. Maybe a cat once. Everyone hates me, Peggy. But I don't hate you either. See? See, that's funny. I... I just thought of something. You know what? Joe, how can you... No, this is important. Listen, it's it's this way. I I used to live here in a shack weeks sometimes, and I'd read books. Oh, good books. Modern library. Do you know about them? Yes, I know. Well, you you can get any book, and, and it's only a buck. It's less than a buck, the best, see? Yes. So I read something by a man who is called Oscar Wilde. He says... Each man kills the thing he loves. It's in a modern library. Each man kills the thing he loves. Maybe that's what I am doing. No, Joe. You don't love me. You don't get it. Like I said, nobody loves me, but I get love anyway. I get something like love because when I start to kill you, Peggy, there there won't be anyone else in the world for you. But to me, no one else will matter. And then, and your eyes, they'll get shiny. Oh, so shiny. And they'll blaze, and, and the blue will spread out. That's why I'm going to kill you, Peggy. Oh, it'll be, it'll be so easy. There won't be anything in them but me. All I got to do is, is take your neck. In my hands, like this. Hey, Peggy, I'm going to kill you. You heard me say it. I, I'm going to kill you now. Why don't you rise? Poor Joe. What? What did you say? You've been hurt. You've been terribly hurt. Poor Joe. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's it. But uh, where did you leave the body, Joe? What are you talking about? After you killed her. Who said I killed her? Why, you said that you... Listen, you bonehead. That's what it's all about. That's why I came in here, to give myself up. See? See, nobody ever loved me except... except that cat, and... when he got scared, it clawed me, and... and I had to kill it. But Miss Piggy, she... she wasn't scared. I, I don't get it. Miss Piggy looked at me, and... and into me, and through me, and... She knew what I was. Rotten. But she said, poor Joe. (laughs) To me, Joe (laughs) Rees. I figured that that was as close as I'd ever get to love. Well, I figured it was enough. (laughs) Go ahead, answer it, Sergeant. Guess that's her father saying she's home. And then you can lock me up, Captain. I need sleep. I'm dead for sleep. I have brought you Peter Lorre, a star of Nobody Loves Me. Tonight's study in Suspense. This is Peter Laurie. I want to remind you to be sure not to miss next Thursday's suspense show. Next Thursday, Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>